Well, I find it definitely very concerning, the whole NHR announcement. Uh, for me, it seems that our government is pretty much making foreigners the... Uh, how do you call it? Botspiatorio? Escape- the scapegoats, perhaps. Yes, the scapegoats. Yes. yes. And uh, I think it will have pretty bad consequences, and I'm quite worried about how this will go around. Okay. And this uh, um, recent announcement, well, it was made out of the blue, so to say. No one was really expecting it. And uh, they are wanting to finish the program until the end of this year which I find just shows that they have no idea what they are doing because people, well, the SAF doesn't even go through with the visa processes and emits residence cards within that period. Right. So this is uh, a very unreasonable decision. Yes. Uh, It's not a final decision yet. So it is going to be voted on and may change on the 29th of November, which ironically is my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute. Can I just stop you there? Yeah. Because I thought this was a done deal and I, I didn't think it was having to go through the promulgation process that the golden visa thing went through. Is there a chance this could be diverted then? I don't I don't think it's going to be fully diverted, but I think that the proposal itself may be adjusted because it's rather unreasonable, like what happened with the golden visa, where the proposal was also rather unreasonable and they did change it, mm. uh, although in the end they also ended it in a, re- a rather abrupt way by, uh, on the 7th of October, also with no really... Not a lot of warning, so I hope that people were able to finish the processes, those who were trying to get those last um, months in before the, the closing. Uh, but i hoping that they at least postpone the um, closing of the program until the end of 2024 to give people time to finish their processes because these processes they are not quick they are not something that you do in two or three months and people are moving from across the seas and that's not something you do in that short period of time and on top of that well the services itself they don't even work to allow that time frame I mean, I have clients that have applied for visas in 2021 and are still waiting for the residency card. Yeah, yeah. Well, you make a good point there. You, you called it unreasonable. And it is, isn't it? I mean, to, to have one part of the of the government making decisions that the, the, another part of the government or the, of the administration can't keep up with, um, which penalizes the people in that process, doesn't seem at all fair. And you would hope, wouldn't you, that there will be some mitigating circumstances and there can be extensions for people who find themselves in that position. But not only that, I mean, the, 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 the people processing that are going through their own reorganization at the moment, aren't they? So, you know, this is this is adding further burdens uh, to the um, to the administration. And yeah, the, the, I suppose the saddest part of it all, which is where you began with this, is who gets the blame for that? It's all these foreigners coming over here. Trying to trying to make a life here and and spend money and buy property and and these sorts of things and who who can be a well, political to be fair I kind of understand what it's coming from because yeah. uh, the NHR program does give a lot of tax benefits and yeah. it's rather unfair from a resident perspective with the amount of taxes we pay mm. but I don't think it's reasonable at all to end something so abruptly when it's something that people plan years for like at least give them time to finish their process Mm -hmm. and um the the housing issue it's definitely a very real issue and i've been talking about this multiple times i don't think this is the the right approach to the problem but uh i can see how these may uh improve the situation on the uh, housing side and on the pricing side and maybe uh, have the prices come down a bit. Um, But 
like I've said multiple times, I think that this issue could have been tackled in a, a, a different way, but it would have to be tackled back when it started. And uh, this is yeah. the whole thing of the lack of control on real estate transactions and lack of control on pricing and people can just price however they want. There is no information, there is no control. And that just leads to an uh, out of control inflation on the market that happens in a lot of places. And I think that the first area that felt that the most was the Algarve with all the foreign interest. And ironically, I don't think that the Algarve is going to be much affected by all this. Well, maybe a bit, but it's still a popular vacation destination and still a lot of people want to buy vacation homes and tourism is still uh, a business. I think the Algarve will be much more affected by the changes on the um, alojamento local, the short rentals uh, policies. I don't know if you already discussed that here. Well, yeah, I mean that makes a lot of sense that that that, that will change things, but it it just it just seems um, short sighted to me. And I, I, actually, one one thing I wanted to acknowledge before before I say that is your business is built on this um, sense of fairness, isn't it? I mean, you want people to come to Portugal, you want foreigners to come here, and you want to help them buy property here, and you don't. I mean, I know that's like it's almost like one of the articles of your con your organizational constitution that that shouldn't happen at the expense of Portuguese people. This can be a win win, can't it? It can be a pie that gets bigger for everybody rather than this situation which we seem to be going into, which I think if, if it's left only to the government, it's very likely it will be like this, um, given what we've seen, you know, in terms of their tactics, um, that it will it will look bad. It will look like it's the foreigners that are doing this. Um, and it, it is an, an unfair situation for local people. And I applaud you for taking that. And it's not an easy position to take, is it, to, to run a business that wants to honour both the incomers and the the native people, and to make sure they get a fair deal as well. How do you how do you think that's going? The government aren't helping you with that, are they? No, the government aren't helping me at all. I'm definitely concerned. I very much hope that they don't decide me to give me a rotten birthday present on the 29th. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I don't really have much control over that, and I may just have to spin the target audience for my uh, business because yeah. as you said my business has been very much about balance and uh, definitely the NHR program is something that a lot of my clients were looking forward to so this affects my business very deeply yeah. and uh, like I said I understand where the measure is coming from I don't necessarily agree with it but I think it should at least give people enough time to finish the process as they already uh, uh, started, which mm. is not the case with the proposal they made. Yeah, and it it does seem to me to be a little bit, I don't know, is it counterintuitive, but to to kill the market, to stop people coming, whether that's based on a reality or just a perception or an, an emotional knee jerk reaction, doesn't seem the best thing for an economy to me. You know, if you are, if you, yes, if you want, I'm also work. concerned on the long term impact this will have because truth yeah. is, as you know, the government is making a lot of money with these incoming foreigners, and it has been a very uh, big source of investment, also in real estate, and a lot of renovation has happened in the cities thanks to this kind of investment. And I am wondering where they are going to get this income they are pushing away from. And I don't think that the, the, the Portuguese people will actually be happy with the result of this on the long term, but we'll see. Yeah, 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 well said. I mean, the, the simple thing to do would be to fund the building of some social housing, would it not, as a, as a major step forward? What's so this... difficult about that? This is something that has been discussed multiple times, but as government projects tend to go, they just don't happen. Yeah, <laughs> so I know, for example, of a location here in Porto that has already been assigned for reconstruction for uh, affordable housing uh, promoted by the government. And I, the first, the person who told me about this was my father back in like 2018 or 2019. My father is no longer with us. And until the date, not a single 
work was done on that property. You're kidding. No. <laughs> right, okay. So I believe there are a lot of projects in that situation. Uh, I know of that one, and I know that are a few in Lisbon too. The ironically, the private uh, the private projects do tend to move forward a lot faster. And ironically, once again, the people the things that make the projects harder for the private sector and investors is exactly the uh, government and the town halls with all their pushing back. So mm. I can give you a very real example of a client of mine who is making a very big development in uh, uh, Gaia. And he purchased, uh, the, we actually agreed on the purchase of the plot in 2021, but the purchase itself was only made in like September 2022. And um, we have been working with Town Hall since like mid-2022. It's been over a year now. And the situation has pretty much been restarted because they changed the Town Hall staff and the new staff pretty much has completely different ideas and wants to make just change the whole project. It's, I mean, what what can be done about that? I don't know this is this is something that's clearly well scandalous, basically, isn't it? And what you know, what 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 can be done is 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 the problem with this that there is such an entrenched sort of bureaucracy, um, and that in am I right in thinking that uh, the I mean, I'm not sure how to put this, but the civil service, the bureaucracy itself, will be um, a major supporter of the government. So the government don't want to lose the votes of the civil service. And so they don't want to upset them too much and get things like this moving. You know, the government, it, it sounds to me like the government won't treat the civil service harshly, the administration, the bureaucracy harshly, because that's where their vote, voting base might be. I don't think that's the issue at all. I think the I, issue with the um, public service is bad management. And okay. that the people on the high charges, the, the high um, office positions are just really bad at their jobs and really uh, misplaced and what we call in Portugal tachos. So when someone is put on the position because they know someone, we oh. call that uh, tacho. Okay. And there's a lot of tacho in uh, uh, public services and they make them work terribly. And I can give you also a very real example. So my mother is an environmental engineer that works for Town Hall for a very long time. And she was she used to be the head of the water department until her reports started being too inconvenient. And she was moved to the sound department. And now her uh, head of the department is a psychologist. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So uh, your family don't sound entirely happy with that um promotion or <laughs> or position there. So what I mean, well let's let, I mean practically what would it take then? It would take a a new government or a new set of politicians who are willing to tackle this issue of uh, in some circles it's called the Peter principle, isn't it, where people are promoted in, up to a level of incompetence and from what you say it sounds like there might be quite a lot of that inside the Portuguese in administration where people get promoted not necessarily because of their skills and competence but for other reasons um and it might be a sort of lifelong thing a sort of job for life situation where they become a blockage and an ineff inefficiency which is actually becoming counterproductive for the local and national economy we're we seeing here and becomes a political issue are there are there any political um parties that are noticing this uh and bring it to people's attention and want to uh, stick a laxative in there so to speak I think in general, everyone, know, everyone knows about this. The issue with the public services is that it, it's also because of the Portuguese law. It's also, it's very, very hard to fire people. And in uh, the public sector, most of the people are with effective contracts, so uh, long-term, uh, uh, like, board contracts. Yes. And... Uh, uh, 
uh, once again, going back to the example of my mother, my mother was head of department, so she was kind of the top of her career and earning a, a good bit. And she was moved to another location where she is kind of, uh, uh, how do you say it? redundant mm -hmm. uh, but she gets still paid the salary as a chief because she cannot <laughs> they cannot reduce her child's salary legally so now she actually earns more than her chief at her department even though she's actually redundant stuff but she's about to retire so there's that too but uh um uh, Overall, I think it's a, a problem of how the legal system was built around employment that also is not helping in this situation at all, because truth is, it's very, very hard to uh, kick out uh, incompetent pe people and prove their incompetence. And generally, the um, government is not really willing to go through that process. So people just stay there or they can just be convenient to the other people of to on top. And I think that the only way to change this would be to change the, the head of the department to people who are more, I think, people who actually have a business mindset and look at it like a business that has to be efficient because what happens right now is that it isn't efficient and generally the priority of the um the public services is to uh save on their budget regardless of the service they are providing but they are just bleeding money with all this bad positioning of staff yep it's not an un unknown phenomena around the world is it um, thank you um, for that little bit of cultural insight there. And uh, uh, cheers, Carl and Anna. You guys rock, says Milan, who's joined us. The NHR, why not phase it in like Anna suggests? Sounds more streamlined. Also, it's just all politics. Lack of control. Pricing is just lacking in long-term planning. It will make an impact on expats. So let's go back to that, Anna. And it you... will make an impact on locals and the local economy too. Yeah, right. And you you, you, you sound a, a somewhat um, sort of grave and serious about this and, and the implications of it long term for your business. Um, what are you what sort of conversations are you having with your clients at the moment and how can you help people? Like that's one of the problems right now, because nothing is set in stone right now. So we are telling them what is the current proposal. But truth is, this may not be the final proposal, but we cannot give any guarantees of that. So generally, people that are already in Portugal and had already started the visa processes, we probably are able to get them the NHR process started until December by certificate of residence. But those of our clients, which we also have that are uh, were, you know, starting the process, but are looking to move next year. It's going to be very hard, especially if they are overseas. Like if they are in Europe, it's much easier because you can just have a rental and have a, a, a Stad Murada and you can say that you are a resident and you can move forward with it. Mm -hmm. But we don't know. Uh, we, actually, literally, my lawyer called the services and they couldn't give us a straight answer on whether or not they will be requiring the, the people to have their residency cards in order to uh, start the, the residency in the NHR, which would make sense. The issue is the SAF is very, very delayed with the residency card attribution. Of course, of course. So, but you are continuing to help people. It's a, it's a rather gray picture at the moment, uh, but you are helping people get over the line with this. Um, we are getting some heat. I mean, I, you know, I'm speaking to as many people as I can about the the possible implications of the NHR across the Good Morning Portugal team and the various co-hosts here. Um, somebody on YouTube took offence to this uh, last night. All this theorising that the end of the NHR shouldn't affect expats' plans is almost insulting. So somebody's been a bit insulted or feeling a bit insulted by what we've been saying, I think. Oh, I thought you were coming here for the food and the culture, so suddenly losing half your income should not matter to you. It's a ridiculous and insensitive, insensitive perspective that views the, the matter abstractly and not in terms of people's real life circumstances. In wow. actuality, once the NHR ends immigration to Portugal, no, sorry, let me read that again. In actuality, 
Once the NHR ends immigration to Portugal, it's going to fall off a cliff. I mean, that sounds, I mean, is that someone having an over emotional reaction or do you think there's some truth in that? I think that um, people consider Portugal, what, what I've seen from my clients is then when people are looking to move, they are generally looking to improve their quality of life. Yes. And of course, how much they their money can go in that country will be a big factor in that. Mm -hmm. And it will influence significantly the comfort of your life. Yeah, right. And um, also for a lot of my clients that are on the higher end of income, the NHR was definitely one of the big factors because they are very taxed on their country of origin and it allowed their income to move forward. And I'm not one to judge what they do with their income. I'm, I'm the first to say to say that I'm very frustrated with the amount of money that I gave to the government, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it is what it is. But yeah. these people have a choice. And if Portugal... Oh, dear. Okay. Um, we It was flickering a little bit. I don't know if um, Savika Anna's having a little bit of a problem um, with her technology because of the weather or for, for other reasons. But we, we seem it, to It's have not that. because of the weather. For some reason, this computer doesn't like this camera. And I actually already changed the, put the new software. So I have no idea what's doing. Why Here's the thing. We, we, we can hear you. So do continue. We, we can definitely still hear what you're saying. Ah, well, there you go. You're back. Right. <laughs> So I was saying, um, I got lost. Ah, you're, so you're, I, I completely you're frustrated understand. about the amount of, you're not judging people for how they want to spend their money, but it, it will affect, or sorry, how they want to deal with their taxation. Um, and you are frustrated by the amount you have to pay the government. Yes, However, but for example, for retirees, it's very, it was an extremely attractive program because yeah. they were only taxed 10% of their income. I mean, who want, wouldn't wanted that? I don't know how it is on the other countries, but here in Portugal, the amount you get when you retire is not necessarily the same amount you are uh, you get when you are earning. So you definitely wanted to stretch it as much as possible, and not everyone is, uh, especially not all of my clients, definitely are in a super comfortable financial position. Mm -hmm. I understand. And I have said this, you know, I understand why that person was upset and they, be, they they finished their comments with, believe it or not, you will see the effects of it very soon. I'm not sure about that. Um, few things happen very soon or quickly, it would seem, well, apart from the ending of the NHL. I think that's true because I, I, well, we already received a multiple, even clients that I've been working with, uh, we already received many contacts saying that they will start considering other countries because if they, they were still at the start of the process, they aren't really stuck here yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, fair enough. We, we we shall see. We shall see. And in the meantime, you will be continuing to help people, of course. Um, Anna, for those people who don't know you, what, what services are you offering to people? So we basically provide a full package of relocation services. We need support with the visa process. And this means the things that you need to obtain in Portugal, because we cannot work in your country of origin as much as we love to. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, currently, another thing that is being very complicated is the bank accounts. It's being harder and harder to open bank accounts online. So we are shifting mostly to opening in person as we've been having a lot of issues with the banks. And I know there are other services that provide this bank account opening. I don't know how they are doing it, but I already got all my lawyers involved and I have uh, maybe they have a contact inside. But uh, uh, it's been very hard for us to open accounts online, even when we have the accounts inside. So hopefully the other guys still find a way. And I'm actually also hoping that Revolut, uh, the online bank who applied to uh, get a, a headquarters in Portugal, does get that through because it would make the online bank account opening so much easier. You're but, right. I mean, I've been waiting for this for a long time. They are headquartered, aren't they, in Porto for sure? Mato Senior, I should think. And yeah, the, but they haven't been approved by the Portugal, the Bank of Portugal yet, as an official bank. I think. 
Yeah, but and, and I would imagine the banking industry is not keen to welcome them among its ranks, but we'll see what happens with that. Yes, I really hope they do because the banks are getting really, really complicated lately. And I understand why, because it, basically the government put them in a position where they are working as, they are doing staff job. So yeah. basically the, 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 government made it so that it's their responsibilities to screen visas which is just silly and then it becomes a whole uh we call it so a, a whole circle because yeah, we've been definitely. having multiple replies where the banks just say oh you need the visa to open the bank account but then you'll need the bank account to choose to have the visa so yeah <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We, we've got a question that's come in here uh, from Kendall Lampkin, a new name on the screen here. Um, does the end of the NHR affect the pension of government, affect the pension of government pensions from the US? I think we understand, uh, which was exempt from Portugal taxes because of yeah, the dual taxation treaty. It wasn't exempt. It uh, had a lower taxation.